Super Nintendo, do you know where my armor is? Your what? I have already found my longsword, and I am ready to do battle. I feel like you're leaving out some pretty crucial information. Will you watch the boy? The who? Papa, I'm scared. You know, I'm actually, like, doing okay. It's all right. If I do not return, your big brothers will take care of you. You're really going to go through with this, aren't you? I am prepared to lay down my life. But why, though? I do it for honor. Oh, so we're reviewing for honor? No, we're not, we're not reviewing for honor. No. So are you gonna be okay, or...? This is a road you cannot travel with me. I must fight alone. Oh, I, I, I didn't ask. Please do not tell anyone that I ever asked. There was a point in my life when I didn't know what night terrors was. I was wrong. My life was wrong. I lived wrong. But thankfully, a friend of mine recommended the game to me, I played it at her house, and here we are. Night Terrors was released on Steam and the Nintendo eShop on October 24th, 2017. Today, I'll be taking a look at the Nintendo Switch version. Night Terrors doesn't have any story to speak of, but frankly, it doesn't need to. Its gameplay does the talking for it. It's only $3 on the eShop, but don't let the low price fool you. It is addictive, and it has no microtransactions. There are five different modes, Normal, Flight Terrors, Endless Night, K-Type, and a special mode called Matt, you can't unlock that yet, you suck. It's amazing to see developers that are so in tune with their fan base in 2019. You only start out with Normal mode and unlock each mode by getting higher and higher scores. My only problem with this is that some modes don't seem harder necessarily, but may play to people's different strengths and weaknesses, so locking them behind a score seems like a misstep. Before we talk about each mode, let's talk about gameplay. You can jump with the L or left directional button, and can attack with the A or right directional button. And you can fly if you keep on pressing the jump button. I know that might sound easy, but it's really not. And this game does support the Pro Controller as well. So when you first start playing, you have three hearts acting as your health bar, but you can replenish them as you continue to play. Your overall health can also increase, but will reset back to three when you die. You'll also come across power-ups in each and every level. Depending on how high your score is, you can even unlock more of them. Some power-ups are better than others though, and sometimes I even opt not to use them. My favorite power-up though is when you can get every single power-up at once. You basically become a beast. Another interesting part of the game are the levels. This really just shows that you're getting farther and farther in a specific mode, and the difficulty increases more and more. In some modes, you do have the option to let monsters go past you, but you only get three strikes. This may be your best option in the moment because the monster bar resets after every level, but it will affect your point streak, and that could affect you unlocking the next mode or power-up. Speaking of the point streak, one way to rack up points is by never taking any damage. Oh, yeah, no, it's just as easy as it sounds, of course. Definitely, it's really, really easy. So let's take a second to break down each mode. Since normal is the first mode you're given, it has a tutorial built into it. The problem is it runs this tutorial every time you play it, no matter how many different modes you unlock. I understand that we need this when starting up the game in a world without manuals, but it would be nice if I could disable it. Flight Terrors is aptly named. You need to be in the air during the entire playthrough. Thankfully, the spikes aren't insta-kill, but their damage could lead you into a downward spiral if you let it get to you. This mode made me seek God. She was dope. Goku's gonna be in Smash. Anyway, let's move on to Endless Nights. 
Endless Nights is exactly what I was looking for in this game. It's a harder version of normal mode, so you don't have to sit through the tutorial every time. Also, there are no levels in this mode, so your enemy counter can't be reset. You do get extra hearts throughout the playthrough, but if you miss three monsters, game over. We played R-Type on the PC Engine for a season of Those Guys Play a few years back, also on Graded Segways, and it was fun and can definitely be seen as an inspiration for this game. That's why I grinned from ear to ear once I saw K-Type. See, this is where the transition comes into play. This mode is like Flight Terrors, but it gives you an unlimited amount of daggers to shoot, effectively turning this into a shoot 'em up This is definitely the hardest mode by far, but I can't say it isn't fun. I'm really digging the art style and characters as well. At first I thought they were going to stick with the undead motif, but having aliens show up makes this game seem like a wacky good time, like some public domain B-movie. One of my biggest pet peeves with this game are loading times when trying to get into a mode, and if that's one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to a game, then sign me up for that. The music speeds up as you get farther into the game, and it seems like it's only one track on a continuous loop. Somehow though, it never gets old. It doesn't feel repetitive, it just gets me pumped to play more. All in all, this game is so much fun. It has this way of making me feel frustrated, but not cheated, which makes me want to keep coming back. And damn it, I will. I give this game 4.5 out of 5 Area 51 Aliens. I wonder how he's doing. I'm, I'm sure he's doing just fine. Yeah, I mean, like, what's the worst that can happen? No, he's dead. Why did he even want to fight in the first place? He said that someone told him that Dragon Ball Z isn't really that good of an anime. And so he just had to start fighting everybody. Yeah, that sounds like something he would do.